Top of the morning to you. Pardon my voice a little bit. I'm kind of getting over something here. Okay, I'm going to make a Blu-ray of this show. All right. Now, the Final Cut Pro's Blu-ray options are not as diverse as a professional Blu-ray um, outfitter would be, but it's useful. Um, it's very useful for sending things to clients that are going to play it on a Blu-ray player. Um, one of the options I do is I, I loop the video so that we can use it as a demo player. Um, we'll put a TV monitor in one of our booths and I'll put a whole bunch of promos together and, and we'll loop the video and it just never ends and it just keeps going and no one ever has to worry about it. So that's one of the reasons why I do that. You get high definition video on Blu-ray and you don't ever have to worry about it. Um, but with that, some of the options are limited. Uh, you don't have the really nice features of, uh, things like Easter eggs and scripting that you would have in, in like DVD studio pro. Okay. So let's get started. Now to do this, you just go to file share. Now you notice I have Blu-ray here. Now you don't always have it. Some, sometimes by default, it's not there. Um, if it is good, if it's not, then here's how we add it. If you go to add destination, you'll see all the different options that come up. And if you were to pick YouTube, for example, and you drag it and drop it down here, you would be able to put in an account name and a password and remember it. And if you did that, um, it would give you the options of what size of video you want, um, the compression that you choose, um, how you want it published, if you wanted a public video or a private video or an unlisted or whatever, and then the category that you want. And these are all by default. Okay, if you notice, I have one up here. Um, I need to change the credentials on that. Uh, the other things you might have are Facebook video, uh, email, which there's no way this uh, this 30 minute show would ever fit in an email, even at this resolution. Um, it just isn't going to happen. But a 30 second spot with this resolution, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Other things, live streams, compressor settings, a bundle. A bundle will give you a whole bunch of different things all at once. This might be a good idea for the future as well. Um, export file. This is what I usually use for master file. Um, now, if you do this, this is interesting. Because you cannot, on the video codec, you cannot pick XDCAM. I don't know why. So here in these settings master file up here. I cannot pick XD cam. Anyway, let's go back to DVD. So, I mean to Blu-ray. So if I were to go here, I would get these options. This is my Blu-ray writer. If you don't have a Blu-ray writer, you cannot do this. Um, you can do a hard drive and send it that way. And I also have a, um, a DVD burner that will do uh, AVC HD or HD DVD. So both of those will work. Um, but here I have a Blu-ray burner, so I'm going to use that. Layers, this has to do with the media. Um, a single layer usually is around 25 gigabytes, and a double layer is around 50. So if you have 25 gigs, you can make it default to single layer, and if you want to do double layer, you can do that. It's up to you. I leave it as automatic because then my computer will automatically pick, and I've never run into a problem like that. This is, if you're having issues, um, you'll be able to pick which media style you want. But for the most part, automatic should work. Um, the disk template, there's five different templates here. Uh, I choose the black because it's the most simple, but there's blue, green, on location, street, and white. Um, and you can pick any one of these that you want to use. Now, I do believe there's ways to change these. Um, and I'm going to show you some ways to slightly modify them right now. But um, I do believe there's ways to actually put in your own templates. Um, I just haven't done any research on that. I'd like to find out and do that on my own. And when I do, I'll upload a video and show you how to do that. Now, when the disc loads, you can make it play the movie or show the menu. I, by default, choose play movie. You know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to delete this and I'm going to go to my, my settings so you can see. So by default on mine, I choose play movie. And the reason I do this is because I also do the include loop movie button. 
And so once the movie starts playing, you can just tell it to loop and it'll never stop. And it'll just keep playing over and over and over until you tell it to stop on your own. So no one ever sees the menu. Um, this use chapter markers as subtitles. It will, um, it will show up with the names of the chapter markers. All right, so now you've got these other options. Background. We can add a background. Um, let me just find... I don't know if I have anything in here like that. Yeah, hey, let's try this. That's not showing anything. Anyway, the background should show up in this area and cover the entire thing. Logo graphic. This is pretty interesting. All right. The logo graphic will go right here in the top right corner. Title graphic. Well, what's the difference between a logo graphic and a title graphic? Well, you're about to find out. In fact, I'll leave the logo graphic there so we can see the difference. Let's put that back up there. Okay, so this is the logo graphic and this is the title graphic. It's huge. On the chapter menu, the title graphic does not appear. Only the logo graphic does. So on the main menu, you'll see the title graphic. But on the chapter menu, you will not. That's important to note. Um, if you have chapter markers throughout your project, you'll be able to select the chapters in here. But you will not see your title graphic here. Now, I read a whole bunch of different web pages to try to find out what the difference was, and nothing said it. So I'm showing you here what those differences are so that you can see. Now, if I choose this for a background... it'll kind of fill in the entire thing and actually is a little bit bigger than the title graphic. See how the title graphic, the darker red is here and it's a little bit smaller. Um, when I click this, you'll see the logo graphic, dis I mean, you'll see the background disappear and it'll be a little bit bigger. There we go. All right. Now, I don't really like to have the logos in there. I don't, I don't even worry about it. So I'm just going to leave it alone. All right. So let's go ahead and close this. And we will now do the actual export. Now, if you did have that, if you put that in there, you, they'll show up on this menu here. And you hit Blu-ray. And if you go to settings, you can actually change the settings if you wanted to. But for the most part, I don't need to. So I'm going to hit share and it'll start preparing everything. And what will happen is it's going to sit here and render this stuff and it'll process. And once it's done processing, it'll do the audio first, then it'll do the video. And once it's done processing those things, it's going to open up my Blu-ray drive and then I'll, I will um, insert the Blu-ray disc and close it and it will start burning the, the disc. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording now. I'll pick it back up in a few minutes once it's ready to burn. All right. So now this little thing came up here that says, please insert the media to burn the disc. David Wilson's Toyota of Las Vegas paid program 08-23-2014. Um, so I've got the Blu-ray disc in my hand. It's a, um, I believe it's a single layer. I am going to put it in the Blu-ray drive. And I close the Blu-ray drive. And what happens is this is actually doing another operation in, within another application called Create Disk. Um, I'm sure this runs within Final Cut Pro, but it's you can see that it's separate from Final Cut Pro now. So now that it's doing this, technically I could export other things or do other things while it's doing that. I try not to because the uh, discs have to kind of sync together in order to burn properly. 
So it's best if I just leave it alone and let it finish burning. The other thing to note is that this did take a couple of hours. You can see by the clock that this is several hours after I started my original recording. You know, today must be like food day on our station because they've done like pozole and tamales and mole and all this kind of good stuff. It makes me hungry and I just ate. So this is now burning on the Blu-ray and when it gets done, I'll go print a label for it. Um, but it will play in a Blu-ray player. It won't play in a DVD player. And that's pretty much it. That's how you create a Blu-ray in Final Cut Pro. Now, like I said before, it's not a professional Blu-ray um, burner or creator program. So it doesn't have like the scripting effects and, and all that kind of stuff that you would get in a professional Blu-ray. Instead, it just has very simple, very basic stuff. Things that you would give to a client so they can see what you created in high definition. That's basically it. All right. So leave a like if you enjoyed this, if you learned anything. Um, and thank you very much for watching.